Welcome back, fellow Vlogmasers. Welcome to Vlogmas Day 6. Today, I wanted to take a minute to talk about my advice for new occupational therapy graduates. Congratulations! You made it through OT school. Next week is my three year anniversary of graduating from OT school. So now you know how long I've been in OT. Um, and I thought it would be nice to kind of provide some advice on my past experience of being a new grad because it can be a little bit scary. If you feel like I've left anything out of this video or you have your own advice for new OT graduates, leave them in the comments below. Let's get started. My number one tip for a new OT graduate is do not do anything that you are uncomfortable with. If you are asked to treat a client or do an intervention or some sort of modality that A, you're just not comfortable with or you don't have enough experience and you just really do not feel safe doing it, please do not do it. Do not put yourself or the client in harm. Um, I, I wouldn't say I've personally experienced this a little bit, um, especially with the current job that I have. Um, I really didn't have any experience working with babies and so I was kind of thrown into it. Um, but I was always up front and if I didn't know what to do, I always asked and if I didn't feel comfortable, I was very truthful because I didn't want to put anyone in harm's way. I would recommend having someone in the room if it's the first time you're doing um, a Hoyer lift or the first time you're transferring a patient or using a heat modality, you know, whatever it is. Ask someone to be there with you or ask someone to do it first, observe, and then you can do the next time. Um, I just, I would hate for a new graduate to feel pressure from like management or something to like treat certain clients and they're not comfortable. So just be confident in yourself. Don't be afraid to say that you don't know what you're doing because sometimes we don't. <laughs> Tip number two, find a mentor. You really just have to ask. <laughs> There's really no other way. Um, sometimes it happens naturally. My supervisor at my current job is actually an occupational therapist, which just really works out. We meet weekly and we talk about my caseload, which is really awesome. If you don't have that, um, you know, if you have a professor or a classmate that you can like talk to often, I recommend that. And uh, don't be afraid to ask if someone will be your mentor. Uh, this is closely related to tip number three, which is keep in close contact with your fellow classmates after graduation. They will come in handy when you, again, don't know what you're doing or have a million questions. Um, it's really nice to just be able to talk to someone that you're comfortable with, bounce ideas back and forth. Um, I would, I still do that. Some of my best friends I have made in OT school and we talk on the phone regularly and we, um, you know, we check in with each other and see if we have intervention ideas and different thoughts um, about the clients that we treat. Um, so yeah, keep in close contact with your classmates. Uh, tip number four, join Facebook groups or online groups that are, first of all, legitimate, but find some groups that um, support the patient population that you work with. So I am currently a part of two Facebook groups, one is a pediatric OT group and then one is a feeding group online. Um, usually they ask for some sort of proof that you're an OT or you're an OT student. So I highly recommend you finding one of those groups and even if you don't, even if you aren't that active on it, it's still nice to kind of like go through and read um, what people are talking about, what's kind of trending, get different uh, intervention ideas from everyone else. Tip number five, remain a part of your national and state organizations. Um, as a student, you are probably required to be a part of AOTA or and or your state organization. So mine is TODA or Texas Occupational Therapy Association. Um, I am still currently a member of both. And the reason that this is so important is because these are the people that are fighting for our profession daily to make sure that we are still a valid profession that is um, necessary in the general medical field, that we're getting reimbursed properly. Um, there's just so many things that they do. I have no idea what they honestly do. I just know that they say that they're working with legislators 
um, and Medicaid and Medicare and just making sure that occupational therapy is not forgotten. So please, 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 especially if it's your first year, I think it's still only $75, or at least it was when I graduated. Um, so it's really not that expensive. You also get access to online journals and you get the monthly subscription to AJOT so you can read all of the articles there. So it's really easy to stay current on evidence-based practice because you can easily look up any article that you want because AOTA gives you access to that. Tip numero seis. <laughs> Learn Spanish. No, that's not one of them, but that would come in handy. Um, tip number six is to stay organized. <clears throat> this is a two-parter. First part, organization for documents like this. Um, documents including patient education, home exercise programs, therapeutic activities, and intervention strategies that you can easily look back on. This is a box that I organized on my first job in pediatric outpatient. And this is just stuff that I collected throughout my year there and a little bit, I um, also did my field work too there, so, so I collected information then as well. Um, but if you can see it, I could probably do an entire video on this. I don't know if you can see, but I have it divided into categories. <laughs> Um, so we've got upper extremity strength, development, cognition, sensory, oral motor, fine motor, handwriting, visual perception, visual motor, and auditory processing. Whoa. You got a close-up of my pimple, sorry. Basically, each one of those contains activities, information, like I said, home exercise programs, um, a lot of different stuff. If you want me to, I can do an entire video just on this box. Ooh. Okay. Okay, a part two of that is to start being organized with your continuing education. I know you're a new grad and you're like, I don't have to turn it in until three years from now. Don't think that because three years from now you're gonna be like, oh crap, I haven't done anything and I'm not organized at all. So please, please, please start now. Final tip, don't feel pressure to find the perfect job as your first job. Um, the first job is really just your chance to make mistakes that are not life-threatening, um, but to really just play around because this is when you're gonna have the lowest expectations. So, oh, sorry, I thought there was something outside my window. <laughs> you know, I don't like the dark windows, they're kind of scary. My, what are they called? My clinical instructor, is that what they call them on field work? I don't know if they're still called, I think they were called CIs, right? My CI, that sounds right. Um, your supervisor for your field work, whatever they're called now, um, mine recommended that if there was an area that I had never worked in, which for me is still currently um, inpatient rehab, he told me that now is the time if I wanted to have my first job to have it be that because there won't be any expectations because I've never had a job before. So they're gonna be willing to take more time to train me, provide me with the education that's needed, and they'll just be more forgiving versus now, you know, I've been an OT for three years, they're probably gonna expect me to have a little bit more knowledge, although maybe they won't because I've been working with children for the last three years. Don't feel pressure to find the perfect job. I left my first job after a year, less than a year, um, and a lot of people in my class did. After six months, they were like, nope, this isn't for me, I'm gonna move on. So don't feel pressure if you work somewhere for six months and wanna quit, it's really not that big of a deal. You'll probably find another job right away and it's not gonna really look that bad on your resume as long as you're able to explain why you left the job. Um, so there you have it, those are my tips for new OT grads. Um, I hope this provided some insight and some guidance to all of you new OT grads out there or if you're about to be a new OT grad, I'm sure lots of people are graduating this December. So congratulations. And um, yeah, here's to your first OT job. Woohoo! See you tomorrow. Bye.